abandon every distraction. My attention is set on you. My devotion, Jesus, my portion. My affection is set on you. I was made to worship. I was made for your embrace. So I misplaced my. I, uh, so those people are in the cars. You didn't see the pictures, but the pictures were great. So I'm sorry that you know. And uh, so, but he showed a lot of pictures, and you did hear his comments about. Uh, I'm, I'm looking for my Bible. I don't know what I did with it. You do? Oh. Thank you. Thank you so much. So um, we, we are, I just want to talk a little bit, you know, and uh, I appreciate John coming down. It was really weird because I was, uh, when I, I, I wanted to do like a Thanksgiving service, and I knew that he had written a note to me and sent his letter down, and um, he had said, well, I'm going to be down at the Springdale Church. So I said, well, he's going to be here. So I thought, well, maybe we could have him come and do a Thanksgiving service. So then I called him, and we, co we connected, and he said... He was supposed to speak at Orient, uh, the little community church in Orient today, but they had somebody there with the COVID, and that didn't work out. I said, well, just come on down and share at our church. So I thought, how great things to be here. So I uh, love John and his family and the work they're doing. Do you think the, that God loves the people here in Deer Park more than he does the people in Canada? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'm sure those people think that, yeah. Do you think God loves the people in Haiti where the Bakeleys are now? Do you think he loves them as much as he loves us? Yeah, that's right. You saw some great pictures of people that, that John's been reaching out to. I love the story about the, these pastors that are preaching at the rodeos and uh, reaching out to people and, and the sticks, the walking sticks, and sharing the gospel. Whatever it takes to get the message out, isn't it, right? So the people up in British Columbia and Canada they need Jesus just as bad and desperately as the people here in Deer Park and Spokane and Washington State does. And so it's pretty amazing, I think, that uh, their ministry and what they're doing uh, up there. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, if you take your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Psalms, a great, you know, uh, the Psalms is a book of Psalms, uh, Psalms for us. I'm just going to read a, little pa a few passages to you. I want to talk about that. You know, I mentioned earlier that the importance of, I think, of worship Worship is a huge thing. Praise is a huge, huge thing. And I, and I titled my sermon, I just said, um, I said, uh, Thanksgiving should be a time of praise and rejoicing. Thanksgiving should be a time of, of praise and rejoicing. So I just want to talk to you out of the Psalms a little bit uh, with you this morning. Uh, so I'm going to read, um, I need to my, I left my glasses too. I think they're right here. I hope they're right here. No? Yeah. Well, I think, yeah, they're fine. No, I got my, hey, I have my pocket. So see, I have, because you can buy these for a buck at the dollar store, so I have them all over the house, you know. So, so it's like, oh, I sit down there, oh, man, I didn't bring my glasses with me, so I can usually find a pair somewhere. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> yep, that's it. <laughs> Raised on a reservation, exactly. Yeah, so uh, if you look at me, I'm looking at uh, Psalms 95. I want to read just a few verses from Psalms 95. Remember, these are the songs. And like I said to you earlier, uh, there is uh, 66, I, mean, I just kind of read through it, the, the concordance. There's 66 times that it talks about singing uh, in, the, in the Psalms. And then 150 times it talks about praising the Lord. You know, and that's just in the book of Psalms. Now, there's lots of other passages that talk about singing and sharing, uh, sharing and, uh, and being thankful. You know, I was thinking I could have looked up the word thankfulness. This is a great time for us to be, to think about thanks. When Thanksgiving is an opportunity for us to be thankful to the Lord and to praise the Lord and worship the Lord and lift him up. So I just picked out some Psalms for us to just look at and think about, because I think that's the best example, best way to look at this. So look at Psalms 95 with me, if you would. Uh, it says, I'm just going to read the first seven verses here of Psalms 95. 
It says, come, let us sing for the joy of the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is a great God, the great king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the flock under his care. I love that David read uh, uh, Psalms 107, great Psalms to read from. Psalms 96, look at 96. I'll just read the first three verses of 96, Psalms 96. Again, it says, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. And I, you know, the verse I put in, because you could go to Psalms, uh, and we could, Psalms 103 is a great psalm to read. It's a really good psalm. Psalm 104, but I put uh, Psalm 104 at the top of my page here. I said, I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. May my, may my meditation be pleasing to him as I rejoice in the Lord. And that's from Psalm 104. So, you know, just some great psalms to think of. Uh, let me go back and read Psalms. Uh, you know, I was thinking about Psalms, uh, Psalms 42. I love Psalms 62. I love Psalms 34. Uh, but look at Psalms 42. That's a good psalm. One that probably you're familiar with too. Just but just listen to this. It says, "As a deer pants." This is Psalms again, chapter forty-two, verse one. As a deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while men say to me all day long, "Where is your God?" These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go with the multitude, leading the procession to the house of God, and shouts with, with shouts of joy and thanksgiving among the festive throng. And then he talks more about this, but then he says, uh, he says a couple times in this passage, put your hope in God, for I will praise him, my Savior and my God. And he ends, uh, he ends it with the same verse, uh, he says, why, verse 11 is, why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. And then look at um, 118, Psalms 118, a familiar, uh, familiar psalm to many. Uh, we, know, we think that Jesus, that probably Jesus, when he and his disciples, after they served the communion, they sang that song, and then they went out. Psalms 118. A great, another good psalm. But I'm just going to read a portion of it to you. So uh, here's my, here's my uh, challenge to you is this week, take some time and read the psalms. You know, uh, read it and, and look at it and look for uh, things that speak to your heart. And it, when you find a verse that speaks to your heart, then, uh, you know, uh, think about that and meditate on that, you know, out of the psalms. They're great um, Look at verse, so I'm looking at Psalms 118, verse 15. You know, uh, I love the song, When the Mountains Tremble. Because God, you know, you know when, uh, when Mount St. Helens blew, uh, that was less than a minute. It was like uh, just a few seconds, right? And it destroyed the mountain. I can't remember, there was like 50 people killed. You know, it covered the whole area here. That's just one mountain, do you know that when they, they anticipate that when uh, um, Yellowstone National Park, you know, if, if you go to Yellowstone, it's like across, it's like 40 miles across. That was a volcano. And it was about 40 times as big as Mount St. Helens. When God, when God decides to do something, you know, it's always big. It's always, you know, the mountains, the mountains and the earth shake. Things happen, right, when God does things. Uh, if you look at Psalms 118, it says, uh, verse 15, uh, shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. 
The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. I will not die but live, and I will proclaim what the Lord has done. The Lord has chastened me severely, but, has, but he has not given me over to death. Open for me the gates of the righteousness. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give thanks, for you answered me. You have become my salvation." And then it goes and talks about Jesus, you know, with a voice, the verses that we usually pull out are these, the stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this, and, mar- and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord, has done, the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O Lord, save us. O Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And from the house of the Lord, we bless you. And then he goes on to talk about a little bit more there. He talks about actually a festive procession. They would come up into Jerusalem and throngs of people would come and praising the Lord. And uh, amazing when you think about that. So would you pray with me as we begin? Uh, I'm not going to keep you too long. I shouldn't say that. Jefferson says never say that. You know. And uh, so anyway, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for uh, your word. We thank you that it reminds us to praise you. It reminds us of who you are. It opens up our hearts and minds, Lord. And this Thanksgiving, may we lift you up. And Lord, forgive us for our, our unthankfulness. Thank, forgive us for not being grateful, Lord, for, uh, for our complacency and uh, apathy, Lord. Forgive us for that. But Lord, may we trust you as we look forward to 2021, and we look forward to what you're doing, Lord. We praise you that you are worthy of our praise, and we want to honor you this morning as we look at your word. We thank you in Jesus' name, amen. Uh, One of the things I ask my kids to do is I ask them to write uh, in my, in my, you know, I do, I teach one class of Washington State history at the Deer Park Home Link. And so I have, uh, this, this semester I have six kids. It's been great because we have to wear masks, uh, you know, and, but it's been great because, you know, I got really good kids. They're doing, they're awesome. And so I asked them to write a, write about somebody in their family, uh, you know, and it could be somebody, it can be somebody alive, I talk about, you know, when, if, you could, if you could talk to somebody that's dead, who would you choose? Abraham Lincoln, you know, Abraham from the Bible, Jesus, Paul, you know, Jesus is still very much alive, but if you could talk to somebody from the past for a couple hours, who would you choose? I ask them to think about that. And then I talk about, you know, there's probably somebody in your family. So I always, so this last week I was reading their papers. It's really good. You know, they had a grandpa that was in, he was in World War II, or they had a cousin that did this or that. Uh, I think the Lilies, it was interesting, they had, I think when Caleb was in my class, Caleb that plays the drums up here, I think he wrote about the governor from Ohio. They had a family, was it the governor from Ohio? Do you remember? Yeah, there was somebody, they, somebody was a governor in their family. But I've had them talk about uh, Wilberforce and different people. It's interesting who you're related to. Well, Lynette Harper's related rem- rem- related to Abraham Lincoln. So if you want to, you know, if you need a log cabin, talk to her. Building a log cabin, she can help you with that. Okay, so so anyway, so here's my point in saying all that is, uh, you know, so I'm related to uh, William Brewster, who was on the Mayflower. This was like in 1620. William Brewster had an interesting life. They wrote a book about him. He was a lay preacher. I got interested in him because he was a preacher, and uh, they did not, they had an ordained preacher, but he stayed in Holland, and William Brewster, he was 60 years old when he went on to the Mayflower. And the first year, and I, I wrote up this article for my kids, so I wrote an article about, uh, you know, Thanksgiving, and uh, I give it to the kids as examples, example for them to look at. And then I also write about my father. My father fought in Okinawa. And so I wrote down some of his stories as an example to show them this is what you do. So, but what's interesting about, you know, Thanksgiving's coming up and, you know, so I'm the 13th generation from William Brewster. William Brewster also was, uh, he was a printer when he was in Holland before he moved to, to America. He had the first library. I'm, you know, now you need to know, I told somebody that earlier. I have no, I can't take any credit for any of that. That was a long time ago, back in the 1600s, right? It was one of the things, but you're, you know, you're related to these people, but I like his life, his life. He said that he could really preach. 
I've never found any sermons from him. But he, they say he was a great prayer warrior. But he would lead the, he would lead the procession into the church, uh, into, the, into the, uh, the Plymouth church there. And so and, uh, I was just talking to Nick and Rachel. They were back there at Plymouth Rock. I've never been back there to see where he came, on, came aboard onto the America. But it's interesting. I'm just saying, so, you know, so my whole point in saying that is, you know, Thanksgiving is a time to worship him. And lift him up, and so, so just, just kind of, I just want to run through this with you. I want you to think about this. I said there are a number of Hebrew and Greek words in the Bible rendered praise. In each testament, praise is our response to God's revelation of Himself, an acknowledgement of His character and His acts. Praise is our expression of delight in God Himself, our expression of the love we feel as we consider how great Thou art. Right? You think about how great he is, and we have an opportunity to praise him and worship him. God's greatness is to be shared by God's people. Those who love God come together to rejoice in the Lord and to exalt him together. Most of the Psalms are corporate worship. They're, they're together, people coming together and worshiping. That doesn't mean you can't just go home and read the Psalm to yourself and worship God one-on-one with God. God loves that also, but I'm just saying that's what the, most of the point that points to. I said this is B. Praise is a festive celebration of our relationship with God. It is the overflowing joy of a people whose vision is filled, is filled with the beauty and glory of their God. Isn't that amazing, right? We come and we're rejoicing, we're celebrating, we're lifting God up and praising him. That's what Thanksgiving is all about. Praise is God's people gathered to adore and give glory to God for all that he is and for all that he has done. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips, right? They will always be on my lips. Glorify the Lord with me. Let let us exalt his name together. And then uh, Hebrews 13, 15, and Jeff, Jeff reminded us of this great verse. It says, through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that confess his name. We, you know, it, to me, it's a great thing to just praise the Lord and lift the Lord up and worship the Lord. You know, that's what it's all about. And then, you know, and I have to give this uh, credit to Larry Richards. He talks about this. Uh, there's a number of personal messages for us in the Psalms. This is two, Roman numeral two. When we read the Psalms and see in them our own emotions and struggles, we find a great release. It is right, it is, it is all right to be human. It is all right to be ourselves. We need not fear what is within us. Or repress the feelings, the repress the feelings, the feeling side of life. I said we are aware that sin has entered the race and warped mankind out of the intended pattern. Christians have come to view their humanity with shame and guilt rather than pride. The Bible tells us that creation viewed that that in creation God viewed man viewed man as the culmination of his creative work and affirmed the work as very good. Man, the Bible says, was made in the image of God, and we are taught to value our humanity. Back page. The Bible really does teach us to affirm our value and worth as human beings. Psalms 8 speaks in wonder that God should have created man a little lower than the heavenly beings, and crowned him with glory and honor. Far from being ashamed of his humanity, the Christian is free to rejoice in who he is, knowing that in creation and in redemption, God has affirmed our worth. One reason why emotions frighten us is that many people do not know how to express or release them. In our culture, the recognition and expression of feelings is not encouraged, especially in negative feelings. And so I was thinking, you know, that really kind of hit home for me. I, you know, I've been, I've been really ungrateful to the Lord because of this COVID thing. I appreciate what uh, John had to say about it. I'm not real happy about the COVID and what has happened. 
And uh, so it's been really hard for me. I realized that I had, to, I had to ask God to forgive me for my lack of thankfulness in terms of, you know, he's the one that chooses everything that comes into our life. And so I need to be thankful. It says, always give thanks. Give thanks for the things that we do not like to happen. You have a flat tire, Lord, there must be a reason for that. You know, when our, we had trouble with our car when we went to Montana, God used that. We stayed an extra day, but that was probably a good thing. Who knows? Maybe we missed uh, running into a storm. You don't know, right? You just trust the Lord for, for, for those kind of things. So, so, you know, in our culture, you know, uh, men, men, we don't feel, you know, men don't cry. We don't feel. We're just tough, old, you know, uh, worn out cowboys or whatever we are. Maybe contractors, worn out contractors could be or truck drivers, right? No feelings, right? So it's interesting because I was just thinking about that. One of the things that they teach, uh, teach women is they need to be indirect, so Jennifer and I, we've talked about this. So when Jennifer, instead of saying, hey, I'm thirsty, she says, man, I, or no, no, instead of saying, you know, can you get me a drink, she'll say, I'm really thirsty. Well, that's my signal. So I say, well, would you like a, would you like a drink of water? Would you like me to get a glass for you, you know? Or she'll, instead of saying, let's go get something to eat, she'll say, I'm, I'm feeling really hungry. Well, do you want me to get? See, it's interesting because the, the women are taught to be indirect. Uh, you know, and so, so lots of times women will say things and, you know, and so sometimes men are kind of stupid. You know, we're kind of stupid. We don't catch it, you know. So maybe they have to say it twice. And they usually have to say it twice. Usually the second time we get it. Oh, you're, you're thir- would you like me to go get a drink for you? You know, but it's interesting how our culture does. Now, men, you know, we don't, you know, we're not supposed to have any emotion. We're just supposed to be, you know, these uh, uh, just tough people. So, so anyway, so. It's just interesting. Feelings is interesting because, and, and it's interesting, I appreciate John too, because he talked about when you're in trouble, lots of times you go to the Psalms. I encourage people when they're depressed and discouraged, go to the Psalms, read the Psalms. You've got anxiety, read the Psalms. Where you're in, in, and John said it, when you're in trouble, you want to read the Psalms. You want to touch base with that. I've, I've been really angry about uh, the COVID thing, you know? And of course, my mom you know, my mom, I've talked about my mom a lot. You know, she, she had a really bad temper. And when she would get mad, you know, it was like the, you know, um, it was like the Incredible Hulk. Watch out. She's going to turn green. Uh, you know, so, the, you know, she, you, she, you could not deal with her. In fact, I have to tell you, even today, my mom would always, I remember her when she was in the retirement home, she would never let me have the last word. She always had something to say about something. She had an opinion about everything. And you don't have, and even if you disagree with her, she had to get her last word in. So she was, she was pretty over the top. She had a lot of anger. And so, so I put in here, so I said, um, it says feelings, this is, this is B1 if you're following me. Feelings are feared. To feel anger well up within and to sense that we're on the verge of losing control is a frightening thing. I don't want to be my mom. And I'm sure you kind of expect, I don't want to be my mom. I don't want to be my dad. I don't want to be like Uncle So and So, and that would go over the over the edge with with my anger or whatever it was, you know. And so we're afraid of that. But the interesting thing about it, and I and I said this for Christian for Christians, there is an added pressure of the notion that it's wrong to feel angry or any other negative emotions, right? I can't feel. I'm not supposed to feel anything. I'm not supposed to do this or do that. If I was a good Christian, I wouldn't have these emotions. That's what we think, right? How can I be so angry? So I've been really angry about the COVID thing, been really frustrated without that, about that. And I realized as I, as I was working through this sermon that, oh, here's my issue. I don't need to tell other people about it. I just need to talk to God about it. I need to tell him about my anger. I need to take it to the Psalms. And remember, David says, you know, there's some great Psalms. David says, just kill them all, God. Make sure that you kill all those guys. Kill all my enemies. Destroy all those people, you know? It sounds pretty pretty hardcore, doesn't it? Right? But the thing about the Psalms is you can take your emotions there and lay because there's people just like you that had similar emotions and laid it out and God helped them through that. You know? God helped them through that. So you, you you're having struggling you're struggling today. Maybe you're depressed. We'll go to the Psalms. David used to get depressed really bad. You know that uh, Winston Churchill, they called he called the Winston Children Chil- Sorry, Winston Churchill called him those black dog days when he'd go into depression, you know. Spurgeon, that great prince of preachers from England, he had terrible days of depression and discouragement. I don't know. We don't talk about suicide. It's interesting. 
uh, interesting suicide. You know, when I was a, when I was like in my 19s and 20s, I was going to Bible school, and God was speaking into my heart, and I really contemplated committing suicide. I really thought a lot about that. People get nervous when you mention that to them because the, what you know what they're thinking is. I don't want to ever have to experience that. I don't want to go, and I understand that, right? And you probably won't experience that. For some people, they experience that, and they're depressed, and they're discouraged. The Psalms have something to say to you. You got troubles this morning? You got a heartache? God wants to speak into your life. He wants to deal with you. You got some anger that you know what to deal with? Take it to the Psalms. Take it to God. Have him speak into your life. It's wrong to feel angry or any other negative emotion. If, if I was a good Christian, I wouldn't have these emotions. I feel guilty because I should be trusting the Lord. And the reality is God says, hey, you are human, and you've got these emotions. So the other thing is, as I've worked through, this, uh, through the Psalms, I was thinking, yeah, I need to take my anger to the Lord and let him deal with me in that regard. As we, as we see, read the Psalms, we see how other people struggle with their emotions, and we can learn how to handle our emotions creatively and how to relate feelings of faith to faith. We can see a good example in Psalm 71, 71 seven, sorry, Psalm 73. This, is, he, this man sees, he looks around, he says, I've been trying to live the Christian life. I've been trying to be pure, but I see all these rich people. I see these people, and they're getting everything they want. They have, you know, you can read Psalm 73. And, but then God speaks into his life, and God shows him. He says, that's all that they have. I'm going to destroy them. And so he finally understands it, and at the end of the psalm, he says, oh, now I understand. You know, this is, you know, people that, that don't have God, what's going to happen to them? He had a different perspective. When you read the Psalms, you get a different perspective. He speaks into your heart and into your life about that. I said, this is C. When we, when we see the reality of some situations, our emotions get the better of us. Real life always holds such struggles for us. There is nothing wrong with them. The emotions we feel then are not bad. They are part of being a human being. And then I said the glory of the believer's privilege is that because he knows God, his emotions can be brought into fullest harmony with reality. You and I can face all of our feelings and find freedom to be ourselves with the Lord. What a privilege to be ourselves with God and to experience his gentle transformation. Got a burden today? Go to the Psalms. Go to the Scriptures. Go to the Lord. He wants to talk to you. He wants to talk to you about what's going on for you, your feelings in your heart. And then I end it with this. I say, we can be honest with God. He loves us and accepts us as we are, yet always so creatively that we are free to grow toward all that he wants us to become. How freeing to realize this is 3A down at the bottom of the second page. How freeing to realize that God's love is unconditional. He is concerned about every aspect of our lives, inviting us to share all that we are with him, that in return he might share himself with us and bring us to health and wholeness. Through the Psalms, we are able to see the men and women of Scripture as real people, gripped by the feelings that move us. We are able to sense a relationship with God that is deeply personal. God meets us as whole, as whole people, as whole persons. He touches our feelings, our emotions, our joys, our sorrows, our despair, and depression. So my challenge to you is, as, as we begin this Thanksgiving week is look to the Lord. Read the Psalms. Find a Psalm that speaks to your emotion. Maybe you're anxious Maybe you're angry. Uh, maybe you're frustrated. Maybe you're joyful. There's lots of joyful songs too. Maybe you're depressed. But find a couple of psalms and just kind of meditate about those and let God speak into your life. He loves you. He knows you. He wants to help you. Right? Isn't that a great thought? Right? Let's close. Dear Father, we just, uh, first of all, we want to pray for John and Cynthia. We pray for Josh, uh, Josh and Cynthia up there in Canada today. We pray for his other sons and daughter 
And we just ask your blessing upon the Noble family. We just pray that you might just have your hand upon them. We pray for John down here as he's ministering and, uh, you know, touching base with lots of connecting with lots of people. We pray for the outreach of these magazines being sent out through the mail, that old snail mail that, you know, that uh, we're using, still back to using it because we can't contact people. So we just pray for the effect of that. We pray that many people might come to see Jesus and come to Christ through the ministry of the, of the nobles and other missionaries, other preachers, other uh, pastors up there sharing in Canada, our brothers and sisters in Christ up there, we ask your blessing upon them. And then secondly, Lord, I ask that you might speak into our life today, that we might take our emotions and lay them at your feet, Lord, that you might work in our hearts, Lord, and transform us and change us. Help us to have your heart about other people, Help us to be gracious and loving. Help us to reach out, Lord, and care about what's going on around us. Lord, most of all, help us to draw close to you and walk close to you this coming week. Help us to be, have a thankful heart. Help us to praise you. We thank you in Jesus' name. I was made to worship. I was made to bless your name.